Hello, hi, and assalamu alaikum. Today we are going to proceed with our lecture, Functionalism. We previously talked about functionalism and uh, discussed uh, various functions of language. Today we are going to talk about functionalism from Halliday's perspective. Um, to know who Halliday is, uh, Michael Halliday or Michael Alexander Kirkwood Halliday um, is, is his complete long name. Okay, uh, he was born in England and uh, in, in 1925 and died in Australia in 2018, right? 2018 was the time when he died and born in England in 1925. Uh, he was a British linguist, uh, also a teacher. If you talk about his education, he uh, did his BA in Chinese language and uh, um, then he did his uh, PhD from the University of Cambridge in linguistics, right? Uh, some of his works are uh, scale and category linguistics. Uh, this book is based on the description of language, Claire, and uh, in, in this book he talks about the description of language and he, he writes that to describe language uh, you need these four categories and three scales unit structure class and system and uh, rank exponents and delicacy what are these things um, we can have a discussion over it in any online class in any online lecture uh, to understand them uh, with proper discussion right he also wrote about intonation and the name of the book is Intonation and Grammar in British English, right? And uh, one of his works is on discourse analysis and the name of the book is Cohesion in English, right? Michael Halliday was uh, a proponent of new Fervin theory. What new Fervin theory is? This theory was uh, proposed by John Rupert Firth. John Rupert Firth. Um, and he is known as the first linguist of Britain. For John Rupert Firth, language is as complex as human life. Right? What does this mean? Uh, this was this was something very new at that time, Claire, but it is acceptable now, Claire. Uh, he, he believes that language is not an automatic process, uh, but it is as complex as human life itself, Claire. Um, what does it mean by language being as complex as human life. Um, for, uh, for Firth, language means uh, something that is malleable. Language is malleable, like human life is malleable. Um, for him, language is unique, right? Uh, how it is unique? Like, it is, it is unique to each speaker. Like, you will never find two people using language in the exact same way. Uh, they'll be using it in a different manner. Clear? Um, so, it means that the production of language is basically a result of uh, psychological, academic, um, social and, and personal skills uh, that are uh, acquired. Um, as uh, as humans they go through life clear um, there are two views of Firth uh, regarding language 
The first is that language has a prosody. And the second is that language is contextual. Um, by prosody, he means uh, intonation, the speed, uh, and the stress and unstress pattern of language, clear? And uh, he, he, he says that uh, these things are completely inherent to each, each individual. So, uh, like, like for him, everyone's language has its own personality. And by contextual, Firth means that uh, like, like words are placed uh, in, in, in specific situation in a specific manner. If, if, we, if you look at collocation, clear? So in collocation, what we do, we, we place words uh, for a specific message, clear? Um, so this is a, a bit about uh, Neo-Ferthian theory. Um, you can explore more about it in, 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 in his book and uh, we can also discuss it in an online class. Okay. Let us come back to Halliday. For Halliday, language is a social phenomenon. Um, it is like uh, what uh, Ferdinand de Saussure also believes that language is uh, a social and cultural phenomenon and it is not like biological which is uh, proposed by Chomsky. Language for them is social phenomena. Uh, like uh, if, if we talk about Halliday's work, uh, so his work is based on the study of his son uh, and his language developing abilities, right? Uh, for, for Halliday, there are seven functions of language uh, for, for, for children in their uh, in their early age or in their early years, clear. Uh, children for him are motivated to acquire language because uh, language serves certain purposes for them, right? So he divide these seven functions into two. The first four function and then the last three functions. The first four functions are instrumental, regulatory, interactional and personal and the last three are heuristic imaginative and representational right the first four functions um, they help the child to satisfy physical uh, emotional and social needs right um, and uh, the next three functions they help the child to, to come into terms with his or her environment, right? If we talk about the instrumental function of language for a child, um, it is when the child uses language to, uh, to express their needs. For example, if a child needs water, uses language, clear? Um, regulatory function is uh, when language is used to tell others what to do. Like if, if a child tells someone to go away or not to come near me or don't disturb, clear? Interactional function is to make contact with others and to form relationship, clear? Like a child tells his or her mother um, love you mom or love you dad, right? Okay. Um, uh, then we have got personal function. So personal function is used to express feelings, uh, opinions and uh, an individual identity. Like uh, if a girl says that uh, I'm a good girl, clear? The next three functions are heuristic, imaginative, and representational, clear? Um, heuristic function is used to gain knowledge about the environment. Uh, imaginative function is uh, used to tell stories and jokes and to create an, an imaginary situation, right? Uh, 
and representational function is used uh, or it is the function through which they convey facts and information clear there is a lot more about Halliday um, there are some other functions that he talks about which we are going to discuss in our next lecture till then take a very good care of yourself thank you very much goodbye